microphone jack. Somebody tweeted that and put a tweet that said, you should add a microphone jack. And as a result of adding that microphone jack, I went to the team and I said, hey, how much does it cost? They told me, how long soon can you do it? A couple months, great. Put it in. They said, well, don't you want to test it in? Nah, sounds good to me. What happens if we make a mistake? I said, is anyone going to die? No? Okay, add the dang thing. All right? So we added it. We outsell that camera right there, <laughs> 10 to 1, because that doesn't have a mic jack, and this doesn't. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and, but that was free. You know, that was free. And so you engage. And then from that engagement becomes this excitement, and people started getting excited about the products, and, and by you're having these conversations with them, then they start to evangelize, and they become social and product and brand ambassadors for you. And folks, I don't know about you, but that's huge OPM. Other people's money. Other people's money. And I, I can't imagine not using that. Now, how do you do all that stuff? It's tough. It's not easy. We had to operate 140 countries, 12, 14 different languages. I finally had to hire a chief listening officer. I put in a chief listening officer. I hired the very first chief blogger ever. And then I decided, okay, now that was three or four years ago. So I said, so I'm going to hire a chief listener. And so everybody's kind of laughing at me. I said, no, no, no. You need somebody to act like an air traffic controller to watch all these conversations that are going online. Not watch every single conversation, but to organize it in all of these different countries. Organize the way in which we're going to do it. And say, when these conversations come in and these people start complaining, well, get, how do you get those over to customer service? And these people are starting to give you ideas about product. How do you get those into product marketing? How do you get these over here into sales? And so people can get sales. And whether it's a B2C or B2B co co you know, kind of conversation, how do you do those things? How do you monitor to see who's talking about using a certain piece of technology to know that you own patents for? And you want to turn that over to your patent attorneys and be able to go after those people to make sure that you're getting proper notice for all the scientists who've worked so hard in those cold rooms for so long to invent this kind of stuff. And so that's the kind of thing you want to start to do. And so that, for us, was a big thing. And so that's how we move that stuff forward in terms of the activity. Now, so I'm going to talk about scale. I mean, it's huge. But the two things I want to talk about, and it's easy for everybody to get in this. I mean, if you're a smaller company, it's easier than a larger company. So I can't understand a smaller company not being in this, but for a large company, Somebody said, why aren't large companies doing this? I said, because they suck. Because they suck at listening. Okay? Because we've outsourced all this stuff. Think about it. We've outsourced a lot of this activity. And we've got to stop doing it because people want to talk to real people. It's amazing. And if you start talking to real people, they start getting engaged and they start buying your products. They want to do business with you. And everything's not going to be perfect because we screw up. We're people. Okay? And it's okay because it's transparent because what's going to happen if you make a mistake? No one's going to die. Okay, you got it. So, and I think people are pretty smart and they figure that out. And that's why we start doing a pretty good job of it because we realize we're early and we don't control our brand. A brand is nothing but a promise delivered. And that's what it is. I got to sell something. And sometimes I may make it up, mess it up. But if I have a conversation, a dialogue with people, they get it. And so that's why being personable in the social media side is catching on so strong. Because all we're doing is tapping into human nature because people want to be listened to. That's it. That's how simple it is. And it's huge. And the matrixes are changing. This isn't about eyeballs and ears, folks. In fact, I'll tell you, stop on this viral marketing crap. Okay, everybody's trying to hit this viral video. I'm going, why are you wasting your freaking time? Do you know what the number one, now some of you are at lunch today, so don't answer this question. What's the number one viral video last year? Anybody know? Smoking baby. Uh, there's always smoking, a smoking baby or a baby. It is a baby, but it was skating babies. Skating babies. Now, anybody remember the brand? Evian. Evian, thank you. You're one of the few people. In fact, I'll have tens and tens of thousands of people come, and I'll guarantee you less than five people have ever answered that question. Evian. And they spent millions. Yep. Now, the thing is, I can go out tomorrow, and I can add a million followers to your Facebook account or to your Twitter account. I can do it. Money, time, give it to me. Let's go. But what's the, what's the use? If they don't follow you, what you should be building is hearts and minds. You want to build a community, and that's the key measurement from now on. It's not about numbers. It's about the hearts and minds, okay? It's about the depth of which you build your relationships with your customers. It's going to be the key thing that sets you apart. 